But this is one of the, the most beautiful moment. I, I always want to experience. Yeah, honestly, because when you are studying the Word of God, you are giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to teach you, to explain things to you. So to those of you that say, I've never had God speaking, this is the moment. Whenever you are studying His Word, the Spirit comes and take you through it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then you will hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. So, so, so. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. the Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Can somebody just exhort us for one minute and tell us what you know about God, what you know about Jesus? Why do you serve Him? Why did you believe Him? Why did you accept Him as your Lord and Savior? Can someone just tell me? If you are ready to do that, if you are not ready, don't bother about it. Is that right? Yes, Pastor. Hallelujah. Daniel, you want to tell us when you start doing this? Come on. Do you want to say something? Daniel, please. Yeah. I don't mind telling you why I serve Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's no problem. Yeah. So I served Jesus since I was a little kid. Amen. And I understood what it meant to have Jesus as my friend before I knew anything else. Mm. And then I discovered that Jesus could live on the inside of me. And first and foremost, he was my friend and he Amen. looked after me and he protected me and we had a good dialogue. Mm. Mm. And uh, I discovered that, you know, this is God, the maker of the universe, that's Hallelujah. my friend. Hallelujah. How big a privilege is that? You don't get a better privilege than that as a friend. Glory also, I discovered, like any friend, that he was trustworthy, mm. he was good, he was kind, mm. he was loving. Hallelujah. And he was the most reliable person in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. it was very easy to follow this man because mm. i knew he was on my side hallelujah uh, i say this man but you know god yeah. god he's bigger than all of that yes and yes. Uh, i discovered that when i was little mm. and as i got older i continued to follow him glory and glory. i met with him and i heard him and then i discovered that following him isn't as easy as i expected as a child mm. but it was worth it glory yeah. be to god Glory be to God. Clap for Jesus. Amen. Clap for Jesus. Amen. Did that miss? Anyone else want to contribute? Yeah, I think you know, Atima said everything. Has mm. almost said it, but he touched every area and every aspect of this. Hallelujah. I would say since I started following Jesus, all what makes me to follow Jesus is, is reliable. He's a friend. He found me. He mm. fell in love with me regardless mm. of the state I am, mm -hmm. he accepted me, just take me the way I am, mm -hmm. and he showed me true love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glad for Jesus. Glad for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah, because you can't be in anything without you understanding why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very funny. Um, when you ask some people, they say, yeah, I was born into it. And uh, I mean, people like that are easily to climb in Christ, but easily fall, because there's no firm foundation. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. The reason I ask this question, I just want to understand the level or the or the, I mean, should I say solidity of your foundation in Christ Jesus? Yeah. Because if the foundation is not well built, 
when the wind blows, when the rain falls, it collapses, right? Yeah, but if the foundation is strong and solid, even when the wind blows, the storm, everything is still going to remain. Um, yes, yeah, standing. Hallelujah. The Glory Lord. be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. So today we are going to be doing the book of John. And this book of John, as we go, it might take us to other areas of Bible. Yeah, but let's do the book of John chapter 4. There's something I want us to see from this very passage. Is that all right? The book of John chapter 4. I would have said we we start from uh, verse 3, but for understanding sake, let us start from verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. From verse 1. Are we all ready? Yes, sir. Book of John, chapter 4, from verse 1. Uh, this is when Jesus talks with... Um, a Samaritan woman. Understand me? There are a lot of things God is going to show us from this passage. This is when God talks with the, with the Samaritan woman. So uh, he says, from verse 1, I'm going to take it. He said, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more people than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. In verse 3, he said, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must need go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakaya. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. You can see that in the book of Genesis, how Joseph located the land and uh, the dog away. In verse 6, now Jacob where was there? Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat down on the way and it was a party six hours. There comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus says unto her, her, give me to drink. Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew, ask drink of me, which and a woman of Samaria, for the Jew have no dealing with the Samaritans, for the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Let us hold on. In verse 9, why does this woman actually say that to Jesus? That why is Jesus asking him? She is a Samaritan. Why is Jesus asking her for water to drink? The Jew and the Samaria have no connection. Even Jesus in the 
I mean from the book of Matthew, gave that confessional statement. Why he was sending his disciples? He said he never sent them to the Gentile, the Samaria, but, but to the lost sheep of Israel. Is that correct? Let's see if that was in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, please. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. It's also in Luke, but let's do Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. There's, there's something I want us to see. In verse 5, he said, Jesus sent out these 12, instructing them. When he said these 12, it means 12 disciples of his. Do not go among the Gentiles and do not go into the city of Samaritans. Do you see? That is to say, for now, we have no business with that. Because as of that point in time, that was the level of the anointing of Jesus. The level of his authority was first of all to the Jew. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Was first of all to the Jew. Because now he was bodily on earth, just as you and I. Are you getting me now? So he said, look, do not go outside where I've sent you. Because the level of the authority I'm operating now is only for the Jew. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because these were the set of people that received salvation before every other nation. He said, and as you go, pre-say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, you see why the Samaritan woman spoke in that manner. That which business have we, yeah, as the Jew, got to do with the Samaritan? So, in verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God. Why did Jesus use that word? Gift of God. Another word, the anointing of God. The gift you are about to receive now. Right? He said, if thou knowest the gift of God. And who it is that says to thee, give me the drink. Though, I mean, thou would have asked of him. And he would give, and he would have given the living water. Why did Jesus say this word? That if you know who is talking to you now, you would have seized this opportunity to ask me for a living water. This would have been a gift to you. The gift of the kingdom. Let's see why Jesus used this word. Let's see. Um, should we go to Jeremiah or Isaiah? Okay, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah, please. Isaiah chapter 44. Is someone following me? Yes, sir. Yes. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, verse 3. Isaiah 44, verse 3 says, For I will pour out water on him who is thirsty. Do you see that? And stream on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. Do you see the gift this woman was about to receive? Jesus said, look, if you know who is asking you for water, because this level of water you see here in the way, you can have it and still be thirsty. He said, this is not what you actually want. He said, how about you become the stream that flows living water? Are you hearing me now? 
I don't know if someone is with me. Oh, yes. How about you become the stream that flows this living water? How about this blessing will not only activate in your life but extend to your offsprings? So do you know who is asking you for water? Water isn't my problem, but I just want to see the kind of heart and the kind of belief you have. Jesus called it gift. Gift. The meanwhile, as of that point in time, the reason I believe Jesus called it gift, it wasn't the Samaritan's heritage as of that point in time. Are you hearing me now? So he becomes everyone inherited when Jesus was crucified, went to hell because of your sin and I to go and disarm the devil and return back with the key of life and he ascended to heaven and the authority has now been given to him. Then when he returned, he said, go to the whole earth the old world, and preach the gospel. Because he said the authority on earth and in heaven has been given to me. Did you see the level of authority? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, should we continue? Yes. Or are we satisfied with that evidence alone? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2. What is going to say about this evidence? Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. He said, For my people have committed two evils. They have abandoned, rejected me, it, it means, the fountain of living water, and they have cut out their own system, broken system, that cannot hold water. Did you see why the water in the well was at the bottom of the well? Okay, he said, okay, let us stop there. You can still see why Jesus called it a gift. If Jesus say, I mean, if the word of God is telling us right here, in verse, in verse, in verse 13, he said, for my people have committed two evils. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have carved out their own System and I C R S T E R O N S. Yeah, it's a broken system that cannot hold water. Do you see many of us suffered? Do you see why some of us who have not actually received Jesus Christ experience lack, even in the abundance of water, they are still tasting? Hallelujah. In verse 11, the woman says unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Did you see her mentality? Jesus was speaking a London language here, like a man from the kingdom. I mean, as a man from the, from the kingdom. kingdom. But this woman is still very carnal. Asking. Jesus, you're talking about water, but you have no to anything to draw water with. The water is at the bottom of the well. So how are you going to draw water from the well? You don't even have container. And the well is deep. From when then has thou that living water. So where are you going to get that living water? Had thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Verse 13. 
Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall taste again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never taste. Hallelujah. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, Hallelujah. springing up into everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. What was Jesus talking about? In this verse 14, what was Jesus talking about? I want us to dwell on this for a moment. Meditate on it. What was Jesus talking about? Telling her that uh, this water from the way, when you drink it, you will be tasted again. But the water I'm going to give to you, you will forever not be tasted. It will become something in you. That thing, what did Jesus mean? Okay. <clears throat> Let's see John. I know Uncle John will tell us better. <laughs> right? Yeah. John. Um, take me dear Holy Spirit. John chapter 35. John chapter 35. Are you there? No, John chapter 6. Yeah, verse 35. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. Hallelujah. Are we there? Yes. Okay, Jesus replied to them, I am the bread of who? Life. Of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry. And the one who believes in me as Savior will never be tasted. For that one will be sustained spiritually. Did you see what Jesus was trying to tell this woman? Jesus was trying to draw this woman close to himself so that this woman will know who Jesus really is then accept Jesus and receive Jesus in, into our very self. <clears throat> and this spirit of Jesus will become the living spirit mm -hmm. in the life of this woman. <clears throat> And this spirit of Jesus will become the source of all our needs. So Jesus is talking to all this evening that we should know, I mean, learn and give him time. We should learn and give him time. I remember when Divine was leading, when I give him something and I ask him, at the same moment, can I have some? He will do his hand like this. He will put his hand at his back. We know it fully. I was the one that gave it to him, but he has forgotten. And he never wants to share. So this is how we are with God. Jesus said, if you know who is asking you water, you would have placed the mind for a living water. You would have placed the mind. Sometimes it happened in our life. Sometimes we see a beggar that is really disabled on the street. That is really disabled on the street. Maybe you just have a pound or five pounds. And this disabled said, please have not eaten. Can I truly have the, I mean, can you just give me anything to buy? 
immediately your mind will take you back to that coin that you have on you. But sometimes because of selfishness, you struggle with it. Maybe I'm going to use this, oh, I propose this coin to buy water or I propose this five pound to do something like that. But the question is that, why you? Why you sometimes? Because something that is real, the Holy Spirit has a way of ministering it to you. But when you struggle with, the Holy Spirit of God is so kind that He will not let you go like that. He will still want to give you understanding of what you are about to do. I wonder sometimes when it is ready, we will say, oh, the weather is not good. That is why I couldn't go to church. Mm. <laughs> Did you, I mean, do you know why you must go to church? Some people will say, I can pray at home and go. Fine, but why are you selfish? Why are you selfish? Do you know God, how good he feels when he sees his children congregate together in praises and worship. He, he, he likes to inhabit that congregation. Do you know how good God feels when you are not ashamed of him? Amen. When you proclaim his glory before many, do you know how good he feels? Do you know the energy people push together that could move a mountain when you are in the journey of prayer. Because you've not been able to realize the obstacles that are always on the way when you are on the journey of prayer. There are a lot of obstacles. Obstacles of distraction. Obstacles of spiritual laziness. Obstacles of name it. But when you are together, that force push all these obstacles away. Are you hearing me now? You will become like bunch of broom. Do you know what is broom? Yeah, bunch of broom. With one broom, as tiny as it is, you can easily break it. But when it becomes a bunch, it's not easy to break. Instead of it to break, it bear and, and come back again. That is just the way it is. So, Jesus Christ said, Is it your praises that you've been selfish about? If you know the gift, if you know who is asking you for praises and worship, you would have asked for a vital blessing. Some of you left home this evening. You created time to sit under the voice of the Holy Spirit in teaching. Do you think Jesus is not here? If Jesus is not here, how come I'm speaking the way I'm speaking? How come? Do you think it's my word? If it is my word, I would have been an expert. I wouldn't have been made a mistake at all. Please understand, the Holy Spirit is only using me as a vessel. What is too much for you to give to God? What is too much? If you know who is asking you, okay, don't you think that Jesus on the level of authority that he was operating, he can command water to come out of the way? He can do it. Do you think he cannot even, speak, even if he was really Tasty because the Bible tells us he was tired. Don't you think he can speak against that taste to go? Yes. Yes. Are you hearing me? So sometimes we must settle down. The problem we really have is we seeking the things of God first before his kingdom and righteousness. But if we learn how to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
All these hazards that cause depression, stress, worries, it will not be there. It will not be there. It will not be there. If we want to buy a very good car. There's what we know as permissible will of God. You will get it. And there is no problem. But is it a perfect will of God as of that twenty time? The Bible tells us the blessings of God make us rich and added no sorrow. Make us rich. Things that God will do. Even need you are thriving in it, but you will sense peace inside of you. Know the hand of God is in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Where are we? Are you sure? Yeah. No. We're in the book of Mark, John, John chapter 6. We are in verse 15. Because we okay, just back said. To Mark, back to John 4. Are we going back to John 4? Or John 6. We are in the, the book of John is our okay, we'll yeah, again. yeah. So John chapter 4, verse 15. Now he said, uh, Then the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I taste not, neither come hither to draw. She didn't see understand properly. Did you sense that? Jesus said unto her, Go call the husband. Jesus want to prove to her now who he is. He said, Go call your husband and come either. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he who thou now hast is not thy husband. In that, in that says that surely, which means what you have said is true. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I perceive that thou art prophet. For what Jesus had just told her, Jesus said to her, of course, it's true, you were spoken that you have no husband, but five have thrown your way, and none of them is your husband. Then this woman was amazed. Then a father worship. Woman said to her, Okay, a father worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain mm. nor you at Jerusalem mm -hmm. worship. With thy father. This is another word that many people are still struggling with. How many people understand this passage? Because many people have translated this passage that it means that church is no longer relevant. But that is not what Jesus was saying. Let us go to John. John chapter 5 verse 28 John 5 verse 28 Are we there? Yes, Pastor. Hallelujah. He yes. said, Do not be surprised at this, for a time is coming when all those who are in the tomb will hear his voice. That is, it doesn't matter where you are. Are you hearing me? And they will come at those who did good things will come out to a resurrection of new life. But those who did evil things will come out to a resurrection of judgment. Hallelujah. Praise God. The 
But the verse have to be, do not be surprised at this, for a time is coming when all those who are in this tomb will hear his voice. Okay, let's go to Malachi. Malachi. Are you there? Yes, Malachi. Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. If you are there, read please. My name will be great among the nation, and we are the sun rises, and we are the sun sets. In every place, inset and pure, all free will be brought to me because my name will be great among the nation, say the Lord Almighty. Did he say in every place? Now it's not only in Jerusalem or in Mante. Right? Okay. Let's see First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2, are you there? Yes. Um, verse 8. Is it verse 8? It's not supposed to be up to verse 8, is it? First Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Is it there, yeah? <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Yeah, read. Therefore, I want the man. Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or destruction. You see? He said, Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray. In every place. In every place to pray. Wherever you are. From your home. From England. Jamaica. Africa, America, Asia, I want every man to pray. It doesn't matter if you are in Jerusalem or if you are in the mountain. I want every man to pray. So that was what Jesus was trying to tell this woman. That a time is coming. Even it is now, the time is now, that you, it, it will not be longer vital or necessary to pray in Jerusalem alone or on this mountain. You can talk to your father wherever you are. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to recite on these things. I want us to recite on this thing. Remember, at the beginning, it was only for the Hebrews, the Jews. Now it extended to the old world. Jesus is saying, give me your time. Give me what I ask of you and see the reward. I want us to ask ourselves, what is it? that you are holding on to, that you refuse to relieve yourself. Is it anger? Is it anxiety? Is it fear? Is it like you taking other things in place of God? Because you think he's not seeing you, or you assume or pretend not to know who he is, or you don't really know who he is, he's asking you now, give me this thing. Give me this thing. You are not different from me. It's a business of sons 
children and father. Say, give me water to drink. This person that could come to your home may not be Jesus himself. It could even be someone you claim as your enemy. Because he said, when I was in the prison, you did not come to visit me. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. And someone says, where did we meet, Lord? You've never been in the prison that I didn't come to visit you? I've never seen you naked? But what was the reply of Jesus? So whatsoever you do to the list of the brother, that's your turn to me. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you did to the list of your brother, that is what you did to me. I want to tell you something. When you spend your time for Jesus, you will never lose that time. He said to his disciples, in fact, it was John, um, Peter, that asked Jesus that question. He said, look, we have left our home, our family, to follow you. What else do we have to do? What is our game? And what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? He said, no one that put every other side, uh, things aside and follow me will not receive the reward even here on earth and in heaven and he continued to ask in another passage he said when I sent you did you lack anything because when God sent you when God is involved even when that journey takes you 40 years your pair of shoes will not be spoiled. Neither would your clothes be torn. Because he will renew you and he will fetch for you. Amen. In the winter, he will clutch you with heat. He will never leave you. Because all he needs is obedience. Okay based on assumption or imagination. Let us assume if this Samaritan woman just gave Jesus that water. I believe what Jesus would have said is that you will not lack anymore now that you find me. It would have. Maybe the woman wouldn't have understand in full detail. But for you and I benefit God has to harden that woman's heart for you and I to learn. Because Bible is basic instruction before living earth. We have to learn. We have to receive instruction. Hallelujah. Yes. Can I just add something? If we read down, just as you write this word in Romans Yeah, please, can you? Praise the Lord. Yeah, I know what you have yeah. Yes. If we go down to verse 25 of that same verse, so the, the woman said, after he has told it us, we don't have to worship God, the time is coming. We are, I read from verse 20, from verse 20, he said, yes, a time is coming and has come, and now has come, when the true worshiper will worship the Father in truth and the Spirit. Mm. For the Father, for the for they are, sorry, we worship God in truth and in spirit. For they are this kind of worshippers, mm. their Father seeking. Praise the Lord. And 424, God is a spirit, and the worshipper must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then comes 25, what the woman said. Then the woman said, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. She did not still know who Jesus, yeah. after all this performance, exactly. tried to announce, say who he was to 
He said, the woman knows that there is a Messiah coming. But mm. he didn't know that the privilege is there, that the Messiah is the one that is standing because yes. the way they were expecting him, like the Old Testament, that you can't go to the altar of God. She forgot that the tongue has been, the curtain has been split up. We now have the free access to go and meet Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we get there, and he, we went get to, here. and he went to say, mm. Call Jesus is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I am the one speaking to you. I am he. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, good. So, how will you now explain verse 23? Because you just read it now. Yes. It said, body, our comments and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father's seekers such to worship Him. Why did you think you Jesus said that word? Just like you rightly told us yesterday in the church about to be born again. It's yeah. not all about saying I'm Christian, I was born into a Christian home. It's your personal encounter with God, giving your totality to God, accepting and believing that is a reward of those that diligently seek it. Okay. Believing that that spirit that raised you from down, Hallelujah. it dwells in you, it fertilizes you. So mm. all you are doing as rightly said, no one will tell you that it's raining that because of this rain, because of the weather, I can't go to church. Mm. I remember you said something when we had our second book. In our first born, we have to I have to stay for three months before we did the dedication, just to be first made. And they say when we have the second born, we go to they say, No, that was a mistake. You can't take this child to the church because it's because of society doctrine. But you can take this child. To the GP to go and take the injection. He said to me, said, if there is any place you must take Jesus to, I take the child to, it should be the house of God to go and say, Thank you for all you've given to me to give me back. And when the second child was straight away, as I was coming from the hospital, the next Sunday, he took the baby and gave it to God Almighty again. Yes. Why are we saying that? Because that is the true much coming to the reality and the understanding that. He wants us to serve him in truth and in spirit. Yes. Our totality should be given to Good. regardless of where we find ourselves yes. as a Christian. That's very good. Clap for Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Because when because Jesus doesn't just speak. Yeah. When he speaks, he talks or or he speaks your mind out of you. Yes. Because the reason why Jesus he said this word specifically is the the Gentiles then and the Samaritans thought that to fulfill all righteousness you must go to Jerusalem or to the mountain to go and pray. Now Jesus is not trying to tell her that it's not all about where you prayed now. That will not make you to be a true worshiper. That is not what God wants. Say so what God wants is someone that will worship it in truth and in spirit. Okay, now the truth Jesus is referring to in this manner is not all about uh, you prayed well or you didn't pray well. You, you try to act as if you pray well or you lie about it. No. He's saying that the act Jesus went is someone that prayed to him in spirit because this God is a spirit. So if you must serve him, you must serve him in spirit and you must pray through me that you haven't known now. But you will know me because I am the truth, the way and the life you must live. Are you hearing me now? Daddy, can I just quickly add one word yeah. that once taught us for Yes. A couple of years ago, in mm. one of your teachings, you said about this truth. That the truth, when we say, self, we, we must worship God in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. It means the acceptability, total accepting that Jesus is who he is. 
Yeah. By doing that, you have to doubt your doubts. Exactly. And believe that regardless of what the spirit or the devil wants to whisper or situation wants to whisper exactly. to you, you have to doubt that, that believe that he is the truth, he is the way, he is everything. Hallelujah, that is it. God says is it. Mm. If he called this thing to be read, mm. because he has said it, automatically, if you treat it by it is read as God has said it. It becomes read. It becomes read. Again. Because he said it in verse uh, 24, he said, God is a spirit. Yes. He said, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, in spirit and, and in truth. truth. You hear me now? Okay. After hearing this, I want us to we deliberate on this for one or two minutes. What is this spirit and the truth? How do you worship God in spirit and in truth? Anyone have just say something? It doesn't matter. Yes, come on. Uh, you have to correctly worship God in truth. Um, I believe you won't be able to properly do this unless you know what he wants you to do. So you should always like meditate on his word and like make sure you know everything that he wants you to do. So mm. you're able to correctly mm. and honor God in truth. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God. Yeah. If, mm. if he say to worship him in spirit and in truth, mm. um, if he is the truth, mm. then we need to have him in us to be able to worship him in the truth. In the truth. So it's reciprocated. So yes. we have him in us, and that rises in us. He rises in us mm. and we worship Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. So we don't, we can't do that until we have His Spirit in us. Yes. And you can try and fake worship Him if you want, <laughs> but the truth is Him. Exactly. And and it's okay to start off fake worshiping Him, mm. but you'll realize that you need something more. You need Him in you in order to worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and it's not that He needs the worship, it's good for us. Exactly, happens, it's for our sake. We edify ourselves, yes. don't we, when we worship Him? Yeah, glory be to God. You see why we must be born again. Yes. Mm. If you are not in that realm or in that kingdom, you wouldn't understand what is happening there. Mm. Are you getting me now? I cannot be talking to you in Spanish or mm. in German now. I understand everything that I'm saying. No. He said, worship him in him. Worship him in him. Mm -hmm. Not outside of him. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit is the truth. Mm -hmm. Worship me in the language that I understand. Mm -hmm. Let there be connection. There is something that attracts, that connects your worship to Him. That is truth and His Spirit. That is truth and His Spirit. So when you are outside of these two things, it's not going to work. If I lost the key to my outside lock or door. The only way I can enter is to break the door. When I break the door, I put some effort and that makes me a thief. That make me have acted suspiciously in this context. Like, why are you breaking the door? Instead of me to report to the police. Because you can't just break your own door. You must report to the police. The authority must come to come and open it. Do you think it's possible for you to enter your house, your own house, through the window? It's wrong. It's wrong. And Jesus told us that anyone that has ever come, they are faith. Because they pass through the window. Mm -hmm. He said, He is the door, He is the way. Mm -hmm. So you must worship Him 
is spirit in truth. So I'm going to leave you with this um, uh, word to meditate on. Ask the Holy Spirit is possible to give you the understanding of worshiping God in truth and in spirit. To know how to give to God. To know how to give your praises, your worship, everything that concerns you. Because God is so big. He can talk to you in the area of your needs. Is the most closest thing to you, if only you recognize it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. Uh, let's clap for Jesus, please. Hallelujah. It is very important. Yes. Imagine Jesus is sitting down there, and I just said, "Let's clap for Jesus." Mm -hmm. Think with the reaction of Jesus. If no one cares about the clap, mm -hmm. or if someone is doing it with maximum satisfaction from your conscience. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I, I would never forget, every day I say it, in short service I say that I said he will never leave us, nor forsake us. So I always mind what I do. Even when I speak, I speak. I don't care if that truth is going to hurt you. That wouldn't deprive me not to say it. But I will, I, 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 I always take in charge of my conscience. I don't care how you judge me, but I will make sure. So long Jesus is here, I will never go aside of something that is going to displace him. Hallelujah. Praise yeah. <coughs> So. We come to the end of the teaching. I believe you understand everything clearly. Yes. And uh, I also believe you're blessed. Oh, yes. Because the more you listen and understand the word of God, the more you get matured. Okay. It's not age that makes you matured in the kingdom. It is your understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word that can never be in vain. Amen. Father Lord, you say you sent your word to heal our diseases. Yes, How many of you believe that as I was teaching the word of God, some sickness were giving ways? Amen. As I was speaking the word of God, God is already preparing a table for you in presence of your enemy. Amen. Amen. That is what you must understand when the word is being spoken. Be connected so that things that doesn't give glory to God will automatically be out from you. Amen. Father Lord, you sent your word to heal all our diseases yes, tonight. Lord. We thank you. Bless we you receive Lord. it from our consummate enthusiasm. Yes, May your name be glorified. Amen. May your name be blessed. We worship you thank in the you. beauty of your holy name. Amen. Father Lord, this word that you sowed into us, O oh Lord, it, it has become life and spirit yes, in Lord, us. Thank you, everlasting King Thank of glory. We will grow in you. Amen. We will give you glory all the days of our life. Amen. Father, thank you for making us to be thank your glory. You, Jesus. Thank, you, Father. thank you, Father. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless your you. word will not fall to the ground until it Amen. accomplishes purpose. Amen. We thank you that every word that comes from your spirit tonight we accomplish his purpose Amen. in our lives. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for everything. You, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Peace be unto you all. I love you all with the love of God. I love you too. Amen. Jesus loves you more.